Hey guys and welcome in our digital classroom series, The Small Tips. These videos are mostly shot during our workshops and I'm just going to tell you the idea behind the setup. Today we are mixing our studio lights and of course our uh, strobes with our model. As you can see in the lighting setup, we're using a harsh light source on our model. As always with our hard light setups, we also have a light in light setup as a backup. This is often an umbrella or a larger softbox that I aim under the same angle as my main light or even at the ceiling. And that light is only used when I think I need to open up the shadow. So for example, for a portrait, I won't use that extra light, but if I'm shooting full body, it's very easy to lose detail in the shadows if you're using that harsh light or smaller light source on your model's face. So that's when we're using that lighting light to just open up the shadows. Now, we're using a red strobe in the back. And by using a black mist filter on or black diffusion filter on my lens, I will get a beautiful, nice, soft lens flare. But what if you don't just want to use strobes? What if you also see some really interesting lighting, for example, on your location or maybe in our studio, like for example, our studio lights? Now, if you want to mix strobes with available light, it's actually pretty easy. You have to make sure that you put your strobes on the lowest setting possible. And this is one of the main advantages, for example, on our Gigoto strobes, because those are hybrid strobes and they can go really low in their settings. So that means that you can shoot almost wide open with strobes. The main advantage of this is if you can put your strobes really low, it doesn't have to compete that much with your ambient light. And you always have to remember that your aperture is your strobe, so you want that as close as possible to the widest aperture on your lens, for example, 2.8 for this lens. But the ambient light or the available light, that is actually controlled by your shutter speed. So the longer the shutter speed, the more of the ambient light will come in. And this is important for those little spots above our model's face in this shot. So in this shot, I put the strobe on the lowest setting and then just experimented with my shutter speed until I got the result I want. Do you want more of that light? Longer shutter speed. If you want less of that light, a shorter shutter speed. But your strobe will still be determined by the aperture. And of course, always that backup strobe for that lighting light. And as you can see here, light set up really easy, but the results can be really nice, especially if you experiment a little bit with looks. As you can see here, one of the images I experimented a little bit with the color balance. The other images I just kept a little bit reddish and one image I even made black and white. So if you like tips like this, very short and straight to the point, just let us know in the comments below. Tell other people about our channel so we can grow and of course like and subscribe. Now if you have a burning question or something that you just can't figure out in your lighting, working with your models or maybe Photoshop or Lightroom, leave a comment below and maybe you will see your question answered in the next episode of our Digital Classroom series. I would say I will close the laptop for now. See you next time. Bye guys.